A very warm welcome to you. This is today's Media Freedom Talk, and today we will speak about the situation in Afghanistan six months after the Taliban took over the country. The media in Afghanistan has a long history, which came to a halt in 1996, when the Taliban ruled the country for the very first time. The country developed into a black box, there was hardly any media. There was maybe a few radio channels like uh, Radio Shahriya. And um, there was no movies, no art, no music. Everything was forbidden. So for the next years, until 2001, uh, hardly any information could get out of the country. After 2001, when the US decided to invade Afghanistan, everything changed. It was a possibility and an opportunity for the Afghan media to start from scratch and to build their media landscape from anew. So millions of dollars were put, were, were, were pumped into the country. Journalists started self-teaching themselves their own skills, or they were trained from outside, from foreign organizations, and uh, they were trying to build the media landscape, which they did. And the media in Afghanistan was also called one of the success stories and compared to the region was relatively free because uh, the media was relatively open and could uh, cover important issues. They had a good media law. So by law, journalists were protected, which doesn't mean that there were no problems, of course, because journalists still were under threat. They were in danger. They were attacked by not only in certain groups like the Taliban, but also Taliban and ISIS, for instance, but also from the government, from warlords, and even NATO uh, were sometimes hindering them from their work. Everything changed again six months ago, like I said before, uh, on 5th, August 15th, when the Taliban took over the country again. So the situation changed completely, and media workers, professional media workers were forced to either leave the country or go into hiding. And this is what we want to look at today. And uh, I'm very happy to be joined by great and excellent panelists who will talk about this issue today. And I'm, I'm very thankful to have them here for their invaluable insight. And um, yeah, so this panel, uh, I'm just going to give you some information before I will introduce the guests that we have today. Uh, this panel is uh, organized by Reporters Without Borders, NDW Academy. And of course, um, we also want to thank the German ministry. I have to look at it because I only know the German name, of course, the BMZ. Um, the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. And uh, thank you for supporting this event. And um, I also want to mention that this panel will be uh, recorded, which you, I think you heard just a few seconds ago. So uh, this is just for your information that everything we will say on this panel will also be recorded and you can have a look at it uh, afterwards. But that doesn't mean that whatever you want to put in the chat or if you want to ask questions, which you can, and uh, we will look at the questions and my colleague will give the questions to me and then we can also um, ask our guests about the question and they can give their, give their insights. So please feel free and don't hesitate to um, ask your questions. We will not wait until the end, but we will try to keep it dynamic and talk um, about what you have uh, on your mind and what our guests have on their minds. So I'm going to um, introduce my guests and I would like to start with our guest who is not here, unfortunately. Um, we have with us Shahla Sheikh. She's a journalist and uh, founder and former editor-in-chief of Nargis FM, the first women's radio station in Jalalabad, which uh, empowers women through their program and their hotline, which we'll talk about later. Um, she's also the founder of an NGO, which is helping women in need. Um, right now, Mrs. Sheikh is in the US, and she was also, uh, she, she used to live in Germany for a few years, when she was uh, holding a scholarship with Reporters Without Borders and the pa uh, Tatz Panther Stiftung. Thank you, Ms. Sheikh, for being here. I hope you can hear us. Okay, I think, she, I think she's muted, but we will, we will talk uh, to her in a few minutes. Yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am hearing you. 
I'm happy that I'm here with you in this very important uh, event. And thank you very much. I come here. Thank you so much, Ms. Sheikh. And then we have Ahmad Wahid Paimon, who is an award-winning journalist, author, and former editor-in-chief of uh, one of the most important daily newspapers in Afghanistan called Hashta Um Mr. Paimon was named the Journalist of the Year in 2015 by the Afghanistan Journalist Center, and he now lives in Germany. We have Ali Akbar Rustami. Thank you for being here. He's also a multiple award-winning journalist and an investigative reporter for the, also the Lady Hashta Soap newspaper. Um, he has been working with young journalists and trained them through an USAID, USAID program. And his work mainly focuses on corruption and international drug trade. I'm also happy to be joined by Mr. Hazrat Bahar. He's a media scholar at the Sheikh Zayed University in Afghanistan in Khost in Eastern Afghanistan. He's also a PhD candidate at the Shanghai University, and he researches the impact of social media on public policy and decision making in Afghanistan. Thank you for, very much for being here. <laughs> so I want to go to Mrs. Sheikh and uh, talk to her about the very few first days after the fall of Kabul and how she experienced it. And, um, oh, great, we can also see you now, Mr. Sheikh. Um, how did you experience the fall of Kabul and what, what did you do? What, how, was, how was it the first few days for you? Uh, it was a bad day of my life, that day when the Taliban captured um, Kabul uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, I um, never be like uh, forget this uh, days and because uh, we done a lot in my country for my region especially for women but everything was gone in one day yes mr sheikh what happened to you and your um, uh, employees who worked with you at the radio station are they safe now and what happened to them um, first of all, I want to, uh, I would like to say thank you very much from uh, the organization with uh, um, Reporter Without Border because, uh, without border because uh, they helped uh, many of my colleagues to uh, come to the Germany and start a new life and safe life. But uh, um, some of my colleagues are in Afghanistan, they are uh, struggling with the situation and they are we can we can't say like they are safe because you know about the situation in Afghanistan and every time it's dangerous and uh, they are suffering in very bad um, a time of their life but uh, I'm still uh, in connect uh, connection with them and I'm trying to help them um, because uh, my colleague most of my colleague are female journalists because my radio was like a voice of women radio that had program for uh, women, like women right. And because of this, they are in uh, like first stage of danger. And um, what are your colleagues who are still in the country? What are they telling you about their situation as, as journalists? Uh, they are uh, uh, like they are at homes. They cannot go outside because uh, I already closed my radio. Uh, after like uh, when I start my radio, it was like uh, 2007, and uh, after 10 and 15 years of uh, struggle and work for my country and my uh, especially women, I closed. And after that, I give them advice that they, for them, it's good to stay at home and don't go outside because it's dangerous. Uh, and they uh, will be searched by the group uh, uh, and they will be, uh, it's dangerous, you know, about situation, especially in my uh, area is in uh, like uh, Eastern zone of Afghanistan. And uh, this is a very uh, like dangerous area of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Sheikh. Um, all right, Paimon, what do you feel when you hear about the colleagues who are still inside the country? Do you feel guilty or 
what how does this make you feel is there some sort of survivor's guilt for you who are in, who is now in safety uh, first of all I thank you for holding this event. It will largely help Afghan reporters in an effort to address the challenges they have been facing with in Afghanistan. If you allow me, I will begin from the changes that have unfortunately occurred in our country over the last six months in various areas, in different fields, including the mass media, that have undergone major drastic changes. The first thing in these changes is the potential threat Taliban have been regrettably posing to the media. Clearly speaking, I can cite an example that is, unfortunately, currently the Taliban are summoning to their office the heads of the mass media in Afghanistan two to four times in a month, presenting to them the unwritten rules created by the Taliban uh, themselves. Everyone knows that regrettably the Afghan law on mass media was abolished with the coming of the Taliban. The law on access to information does not exist anymore. It has been replaced by a law in eight articles in pursuit of this eight article law, regrettably, the Taliban are pushing new legislations every week and bring them to the attention of the media, warning them if they move away from these legislations or perform their tasks against these laws, they will be dealt with the most possible severe form of punishment. There are cases where media activists have been warned by Taliban resorting to guns and weapons, or they are threatened to death. Besides, unfortunately, the level of motivation of work among the Afghan reporters have been drastically reduced. In other words, it has reached its lowest level. Over the last 20 years, our reporters were always used to the free and democratic legislations, to the values that are considered as the great achievement of the Afghan people. One of these major achievements was the freedom of expression, the diversity of media in Afghanistan. However, today, unfortunately, they cannot enjoy this freedom anymore, nor can they employ the principles in the criteria they have learned in the school of journalism when they write or speak or provide information. In their media work, journalists are forced to follow what the Taliban prescribe or dictate to them. And this has led to the fact that their motivation of work and that of the journalistic work fall to the lowest level. This has also caused many Afghan journalists who were stranded in the country over the recent months or were unable to flee Afghanistan, unfortunately quitted their job and were no longer interested in following their work. And that's why I wanted to know how, how does this make you feel? You are being in safety now, Shamal? You are now living in a safe place. How do you feel about your colleagues 
who were in Afghanistan. What is your feeling? Uh, I, I love to continue my discussion, but uh, I will refer to your question, as these are also essential. Uh, naturally, here in Germany, it is a democratic society, a land where its people believe in freedom. Uh, the state believes in freedom value the democratic thoughts, uh, the rights of the people, the women's rights, and human rights in general. Obviously, it is a pleasant feeling for those who could escape a dark and horrified atmosphere of Taliban and enter a democratic environment. Life is pleasant here and you are in safety. Yes, uh, I feel uh, uh, quite safe here. And as a news journalist who could encounter serious dangers in life in Afghanistan, I would like to express my gratitude to both the state and nation of Germany who reached out to a major part of Afghan media activists and transported them uh, to uh, their country. Though, from my point of view, it is not enough. We still have many Afghan journalists who regrettably are living in a very deplorable situation in Afghanistan. I hope these efforts of the state and nation of Germany will continue in the future. You just mentioned you speak to your colleagues who are still on the ground and what are they telling you? What exactly um, are they going through also financially? Incidentally, I have been in contact with my colleagues, with the various uh, reporters every day. For many of them, life now is very difficult. Unfortunately, as I referred to this earlier, despite being threatened by the Taliban every day, where Taliban are trying to implement their petrifying and obscurantist laws in the country's media, and mention them to the reporters uh, frequently. Uh, the reporters have been faced with economic issues as a crisis or a big challenge affecting both the media and the reporters. That's why a large number of local reporters lost their jobs. Later, if you want later, in the continuation of our discussion, I will also elaborate a bit on how economic problems have negatively affected the work of the media in Afghanistan. Thank you. Mr. Rustami, you are an investigative journalist. Um, do you also speak to investigative reporters on the ground? And is it even possible to do investigative work uh, under the Taliban? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, allow me to thank you and uh, the colleagues who have been involved in organizing this meeting. With the permission of my colleagues here, I would like to briefly give you an introduction uh, on the uh, freedom of uh, speech or uh, uh, freedom of expression, as Mr. Paimon put it rightly, and uh, the free activities of media in Afghanistan over the past 20 years has been one of the major achievements of the people of Afghanistan, including the media elites. But regret regrettably, these achievements 
were lost in an overnight after the Taliban took over. Once again, a black history hit the Afghan media. This freedom had been achieved with a huge investment of the international community, as you referred to it at the beginning. This has been attained with lives of more than 100 Afghan journalists. <clears throat> and over the last two decades, over 1,000 cases of violence against them were registered. I mean, the freedom that was institutionalized in Afghanistan was achieved with the price of many victims. Thus, over the last 20 years, we have witnessed the best legislations on press in Afghanistan. We saw the best media and the best reports in the uh, Afghan press, which were not possible in other countries in the region, including the investigative reports. Regrettably today, the uh, creation of investigative reports is not possible under the Taliban nor is access to information given. In addition, there are limitations on reporters' activities. Female reporters in particular, lack of permission to media organization to defend the rights of the reporters, Taliban's uh, systematic censorship conducted on the media, absence of uh, legal um, framework for the media to continue their operations. With such a legal framework by which the media should be guided uh, is absent, everything will no doubt be run as per recommendations and orders. A large part of Afghan media runs as per the instructions of the Taliban. This is a reality the world should know. I would like to pinpoint and will later refer to my investigative reports that there is no legal framework for the operation of the media like our law on mass media which was the best in the region which has been still replaced currently with the instructions and orders of the Taliban regrettably. To follow up the violence against reporters, Afghan media enjoyed the best uh, commission under, under the law on media. It was the commission on addressing uh, media violations, which is abolished now. In the absence of this law, Taliban's intelligence, uh, their security institutions, Ministry of Islamic Affairs, arbitrarily arrest, torture, or terrorize the reporters. According to the latest uh, report published, over the last six months, more than 50 reporters have been arrested and tortured by the Taliban. And this, no doubt, is uh, on the increase. Therefore, in the absence of a law, particularly the law on access to information, which guarantees the information, we believe that freedom of speech without access to information has no meaning. And the fundamental meaning of access to information is ensured by the investigative reports. When our law on access to information is abolished, reporter being hesitant to, to ask information or request a document from the Taliban. Obviously, there will be no investigative journalism. It was largely institutionalized in the Afghan media. Over the last 20 years, a great number of Afghan media provided the best investigative reports uncovered big corruption cases. In various areas, big mafia were exposed in various sectors, but today, regrettably, they cannot be publicized in the media in Afghanistan because there is an atmosphere of fear, horror, and oppression. The fear created by the Taliban refrain a reporter from having the courage to make a criticism, let alone reveal something. Uh, what is this fear? What are they scared of? I want to give an example. Recently, uh, as Mr. Paimon referred to it earlier, despite the Taliban claiming that as of freedom of speech prevails in the country and that there is no pressure, I want to give you three opposing examples. One of the most powerful Taliban, however, instructs the media, if you do not do so, you will finally be perished. So this will, of course, scare the reporter and will choose to follow suit. Islamic Affairs Minister refers to one of the renowned media, telling them openly what to publish and what not. A media 
An intelligence representative of Pakistan goes to a famous Afghan media, instructed them which matters to cover in their programs. Therefore, they do not have the courage to prepare investigative reports. We have very clear indications that the number of productive reports over the last six months have dropped unprecedentedly because a reporter does not have the courage to reflect the criticism of the people. The reporter does not have the courage uh, to be critical. He is forced to exercise self-censorship because the fair posed to him and his family. Fifty reporters were arrested over a few months in Afghanistan. Some were tortured. Still some are threatened by a telephone. So neither the reporter uh, dares to criticize nor the media that is forced to censorship. Some of the famous Afghan media have been waiting to see how the world is going to deal with the Taliban. They are asking themselves whether this deal will help produce some relative freedom for the activists of the media. Otherwise, I am sure and have precise information that several Afghan media who have the sources will be forced to move their office outside the country because they can reflect the real views of the people. There are more challenges to which I will come during this forum. I believe uh, I will want to note once more that in the current situation, taking the limitations posed by the Taliban against the, Af against the Afghan media into consideration, far from having the courage to prepare investigative reports, I believe in the monitoring of the Afghan mass media demonstrates that the level of productive reports have dropped to the lowest level. A reporter is forced to suffice on news conferences of Taliban leaders and report them as news. I hope that the media institutions, RSF and other institutions involved in Afghan media matters on account of circumstances and challenges, media are faced with the Afghanistan enter a deal in dialogue with the Taliban so that the real problem Afghan reporters which they are currently faced with are resolved with, with the mediation and cooperation of the media institution. Thank you, Mr. Rasami. Uh, Bahar, do you think that this is actually happening, that uh, foreign countries are talking, when they're talking to the Taliban, and we've seen that they have been in talks with the Taliban, that they're bringing up this May, issue? All right, Bahar. I think Shumham. this is okay. the only hopes and only expectations that uh, people back in Afghanistan, particularly the media, may look forward to, because uh, these uh, international organizations, I would say, they have the power, uh, political power, and they have the opportunity to talk with the Taliban. And uh, they, I think that they are the only uh, possible option. Uh, I'm sure that uh, they could talk with the Taliban and uh, they could pressure, they could put pressure on the Taliban, uh, particularly the media organizations, I would, uh, say, like uh, Dutch Valley Academy would be one of them if if they could take the in initiative. I have heard that uh, there are still uh, uh, plans uh, underway uh, to to communicate with the Taliban. Uh, to and there is also another uh, development uh, happening that. Uh, the owner of the media organization in Afghanistan, uh, they are coordinating uh, uh, a, a kind of entity to build uh, an entity that could be talking with the Taliban on behalf of the, all those organizations. Uh, but still, there are some problems among those organizations. Uh, they are not properly uh, organized so far, and uh, they have not been properly coordinated. Uh, but based on my information, uh, the Taliban have approached some of those organizations, uh, telling them uh, to uh, appoint or establish a single 
uh, body or entity that could uh, talk or that could represent all media houses or all media organizations or all media outlet in Afghanistan uh, to, to talk with the Taliban. But uh, that organization, if it is uh, it's going to be established, needs, I would say, uh, a support and also uh, international intervention from uh, international organizations. Uh, they need to be coordinated, uh, they need to be supported uh, because uh, lots of um, uh, owner of those medias are not in Afghanistan these days. Uh, but that doesn't mean that media doesn't exist in Afghanistan. Still, there are some organizations, uh, media outlet, although they have slightly softened their approach, uh, before, as it was mentioned here, uh, they were very progressive and very critical vis-a-vis uh, -vis the government and what was happening in the government. They could easily criticize, but uh, things totally changed after the 15th of uh, August. Uh, but still, I would say uh, the, 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 there are some uh, initiatives uh, happening nowadays. Uh, I think that, that those initiatives needs to be supported, uh, that needs to be helped. And I think that's the only expectations, I would say, for example, if media organization like uh, Dutch Valley Academy or uh, in, uh, Reporter Without Border, uh, they could talk with, uh, with the Taliban more uh, openly and from a very strong positions because back home media, they are not in a position that they could boldly talk with the Taliban because of uh, their, they could be later on target and they could be later on label with different names. So it's uh, uh, the only hope from Afghanistan uh, that although lots has happened in Afghanistan, but in a very negative context, I would say uh, the, 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 the hard won uh, values, democratic values, freedom of speech, freedom of thought, uh, that that's are already on the brinks or that are the, or may have already been collapsed. So the, the, the ones that are still remaining, they need to be strongly supported. And uh, the only thing, the, the, the only uh, actors that could help to maintain the current status quo or improve that current uh, status quo are, uh, I would say, the international media organizations who help in the past too. Uh, for example, uh, Dutch Valley Academy is, uh, uh, that is what I have experienced, like they coordinated, uh, they established network not only among the journalists, but also among the scholars and uh, they, they provided training. Uh, these days, I think uh, they, these kind of organizations could intervene uh, to, to financially support those uh, remaining media uh, outlets and also talked with the current uh, regime of the Taliban on behalf of all these organizations. In meanwhile, uh, they could uh, also put some pressures and they could condition some of those, uh, uh, put some uh, condition those uh, criteria with, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, for example, the, the humanitarian aids may not be easily going through unless uh, they soften their approach toward the media or some extra um, condition they could put. Uh, but again, that would be only the international organizations and, and for the time being, that is the, uh, the only yeah. hope and I think that's the right time and that's the uh, right actors that they could intervene to talk with the Taliban. We're seeing that international organizations, international governments are already saying that they are trying to put pressure on the, uh, on the Taliban regime, but do you think that's enough? And I also would like to know what do you feel, um, because when you speak to uh, politicians in the West, often you hear that they say, um, well, and the majority of the Afghan population, they're supporting the Taliban. You are from the east of Afghanistan. You, you, you are from a region where uh, people are more, let's say, traditional and focus more on, tra on the traditional side of life. And uh, you are from a region where people in the West think who are supporting maybe Taliban or more traditionalists. Um, what would you say to them and uh, to, 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 to those people in the West? First thing that if uh, international uh, players, particularly media organizations, are doing enough uh, to communicate, or oh, those uh, struggles are already 
have been underway. Uh, based on my information, there were some plans uh, that some of the international media organizations were trying to approach the Taliban or uh, with the organizations that I have talked to, uh, I have uh, my thought and I have shared with them that that could be the possible means and the possible option. Uh, but so far, uh, later on, I uh, did not uh, receive or uh, didn't, uh, so far, I don't know whether uh, that initiative really uh, took place. But that is the only option and I think that should be accelerated uh, if it is uh, somehow uh, the, the international organization or governments are reluctant to support. I think that is the, because that is the only option. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, is how people are supportive of the Taliban. Uh, I think that is difficult because uh, we have been hearing lots of uh, uh, noise on, 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 on media and the people I have talked with uh, and uh, the, the crown reality. It's a uh, some people may say that yes they are supportive but uh, i would say that still because uh, they are the, the 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 prevailing fears are so strong because if they are criticized if they are going to uh, questions uh, the, the the way the talibans are doing things so they are risking their lives so no uh, referendum or no holistic survey have been conducted to, to, to show that how supportive those peoples are of the Taliban. Uh, but just one thing happened, that is uh, the bloodshed stopped, but that doesn't mean there is, there is the, the, that, that, that was the end of, of, of hardship. I would say, yes, the fresh bloodshed stopped to some extent, but there are so many things are happening the hardship of the people. Just recently, the UNICEF says that around one million people are 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 are, are faced with a with the immediate uh, uh, death threats and uh, the economic. Lots of people just lost their jobs and they don't have the means of of, of livelihoods. So so many things are happening, but in a uh, in a totally different or a negative uh, context. Thank you. So actually, DW Academy has uh, uh, has uh, produced a statement, a needs assessment, um, uh, and it has looked on the situ at the situation on the ground and has talked to uh, people who are journalists or professional media workers, and they have also concluded that the majority of the participants say that they worry about their media's future and they think that uh, their their future will be a bad one. Forty three percent say that their whole program has changed. And um, what's also, I think, very important is that 75% have said that female journalists in their media outlets are not working anymore. And I want to, uh, Mr. Sheikh, talk about the situation of the female journalists again and come to, um, come to you. Um, uh, we have heard about the situation overall, but can you give us more information on, on what female journalists are doing? According to DW Academy, only 75% uh, have stopped working. Is this also what you are seeing and what you're hearing from on the ground? Um, yes, uh, this is correct information because most of female journalists are uh, like uh, left their jobs because the uh, uh, situation is not uh, good because of the uh, security problem. They cannot even uh, go out from the, uh, their house uh, and it's uh, impossible to go and start a job. And very uh, small amount of women, they like um, working uh, uh, as a journalist, but they are uh, on very big uh, the restriction of Taliban. Even they cannot uh, help Help other women. They cannot raise the um, other Afghan women's uh, wives, and also they cannot uh, like uh, um, even uh, they cannot defend their own rights. You know, they they should be um, everything they should do with the uh, permission of government. What kind of clothes they should uh, wear? What kind of like uh, what they should speak? You know, everything is in restriction. And they also maybe in next two and three months, maybe they will also leave their jobs because this is uh, um, not easy to work in this kind of uh, situation. And they they are in very um, critical situation and they need help. And uh, yes, I'm 
I am like uh, agree with this uh, information. Thank you, Mr. Sheikh. I will come back to you uh, in a few minutes, and uh, I really would like to know how women are um, are dealing with the situation, and how they are finding solutions. But first, I want to uh, have a look at the questions that we received. Uh, and my um, colleague, Kostafa, he will, from Reporters Without Borders, he will um, read the questions so we can have a look at them. Okay, good evening also from my side, Christopher Resch. I'm a media relations officer for Reporters Without Borders. We have a question from um, Derja Türk Nachbauer, who is um, a member of the German Parliament um, and um, representative for um, press and media freedom um, in the um, yeah in the committee for for um, humanitarian rights. I'm sorry about this. Um, would um, it help to have like a special representative for press freedoms at the United Nations um, to kind of um, raise the pressure on the Taliban in Afghanistan? You are yeah. nodding. Do you want to answer? <coughs> I would like to mention one point here. Uh, I would like to, to after 15th of here. August. Uh, Something in the name of freedom of expression uh, does not exist anymore in Afghanistan. The freedom of expression that was attained with difficulties over the past 20 years was lifted in an overnight. Now, to revive the freedom of expression, to invigorate the value on which the international community has invested, what needs to be done? Regrettably, over the past few months, when an international opportunity has been provided for the Taliban, some conferences were organized in some countries, but no mention were made on guaranteeing the freedom of expression, neither by the international community, nor the donor countries or the United Nations. Freedom of expression is vital for peace, human rights and justice. Therefore, Afghan journalists expect the donor nations, countries that are effective on matters related to Afghanistan, particularly the United Nations, to make the freedom of expression as one of the five preconditions pertaining to the talks or dialogues with the Taliban. Because the freedom of expression is guaranteed in the Afghan constitution. But we do not have anything in the name of law. All legal uh, structure are demolished. The law on access to information is abolished. The Commission on Monitoring and Access to Information is eliminated. The law on mass media describing the work of the media is eradicated. Though Taliban confirmed its existence two weeks ago, but it is not yet implemented. The Commission on Addressing Media Violations which is an important tool for work of the reporters in media is ended. Media institutions have not been given permission to work and a number of other acute problems still persist that are unfortunately not discussed in talks provided by the international community so far, uh, the Taliban, including Oslo meeting in Norway. Not, nothing was mentioned about a guarantee for the freedom of expression. My expectation and that of my colleagues in news community in media from the United Nations donor countries is to include the freedom of expression in the list of their prerequisites. Therefore, I would like, apart from the United Nations, to take this matter into account. International news institutions, RSF, can do lobbying with countries and influential organizations to really advance this essential prerequisite forcing the Taliban to accept it. I hope this request is realized to, to attain a, relatively, a relative freedom for the Afghan media. Otherwise, currently there are eight fundamental challenges which the Afghan media are faced with. While we do not have freedom of expression anymore, there are limitations in the work of Afghan media, restriction in information delivery, in the work of the reporters, particularly female 
female reporters, lack of permission for media organizations for advocacy in defense of journalists' rights, abolition of the law on access to information. I repeat, the most important case, abolition of regulation on the establishment in, in, in activity of media institutions. No media has been able to get its license renewed over the last six months. And most importantly, the law on mass media and commissions on addressing media violations. Or, or these eight cases uh, that directly demonstrate what really the intention of the Taliban is, who practically uh, eliminated the freedom of expression. Therefore, I repeat, I hope that one of five requests should be the freedom of expression, as discussed earlier. Thank you so much. We have <clears throat> more questions. Mustafa? I cannot hear uh, Christopher. I cannot hear Christopher. Of partial non controlled reporting. And I Okay, sorry, I, I just hear that the, that the sound was off. Um, I will repeat the question by uh, Mr. Michael Tecklenburg. Thank you for this. Are there journalists in Afghanistan currently who would be willing or would, be, or would feel able to explore with the Ministry of Communications the possibilities of partial non-controlled reporting? And I, as I asked uh, Mr. Tecklenburg to elaborate a bit more, um, yes, uh, I assume that first even an in illegitimate uh, Taliban government has to cooperate uh, in some ways with, ways with journalists. And his second point, the Taliban government is also not homogeneous and uh, therefore can be talked to in less radical ways. Mr. Tecklenburg wants to know whether the Afghan journalists can talk to, to a number or a part of Taliban on the freedom of expression. As he said, uh, they are not a homogeneous uh, group to share uh, the same view. Is this uh, possible? In my view, the Taliban do not treat the journalists in a way which uh, we expect to deal with that, providing some facilities for the media community in Afghanistan. Uh, look, currently we see that thousands of soldiers of the previous regimes Thousands of employees of the past government are living in Afghanistan almost in safety. The only group that does not enjoy security are the journalists. This means that the Taliban have a profound animosity with the freedom of expression and uh, media. Sometimes ago, I watched a video clip of a clergy guy supportive of a Taliban published uh, to thousands of audiences about the media where some leaders of Taliban were also among them. He said, quote, freedom of expression is dead in Afghanistan. The Republic is gone, and the freedom of expression is dead. Media and reporters must dream of it in Afghanistan." Unquote. <coughs> when a reporter hears this sentence, he cannot even dare to go and talk with the Taliban. As I said earlier, <coughs> Taliban invites the journalists or his boss in his office, and without hearing anything from him, without asking him a question, asking about media challenges, begins to give him a list of what to do, one, two, uh, three, four, or five. These are our new laws. From tomorrow onwards, these are to be adhered to. On the other hand, 
Taliban have not been honest in their words over the past six months. They forgot honesty and are not keeping their words. Look, the world believes that currently the situation in Afghanistan is calm because the news about the Taliban's approach to media and reporters are not published by domestic and international media. Uh, uh, but I, as a reporter, being in contact with my colleagues in Afghanistan, realize the depth of this catastrophe. Those living in Germany, USA, Europe, and other places regrettably cannot perceive the, the, the graveness of this disaster. Another point is that the Taliban still tries to be recognized. To achieve this, they lie to the world. They show to the world as if they respect the freedom of expression and freedom of media. But in practice, they are doing the opposite. And with regard to the other question, one thing I want to add is that, and it is a very important point, see, the world is looking to Afghanistan through what is happening in Kabul. But the catastrophe is unbelievably more deeper and broader at the provincial levels in the country that cannot be compared with the capital. Most medias are closed in the provinces. Yesterday I saw media publish news about the Valentine's Day in Kabul. They managed to do it somehow, but at the provincial level of Afghanistan, if a media talks about the Valentine's Day, all its stuff will be condemned to death by the local uh, rulers. The voice of media is suffocated in the provinces and cannot be compared with the capital. This is an acute crisis and unfortunately a large number of journalists have quitted their jobs in the provinces, staying at home or went underground or went to districts and villages. They have no contact with me or with the RSF or with any other person. They do not see any door of hope to raise their voice and share their pains with the world. Because they do not live in Kabul. Because all international organizations, states and governments are focusing uh, on Kabul. And unfortunately, the tragedy that is happening in the provinces, districts and villages about Afghan reporters is gradually falling uh, into oblivion. Thank you, Mr. Faiman. Do we have more questions? If you want to... Um, uh, if you want to, um, ha if you have a question, just put them in the chat and you can post them and then we will have a look at them. And Christoph uh, was nodding, so I guess we do have more questions. So yeah, we have a question by Mr. Atam Hamid. Uh, thank you for this, Mr. Hamid. Um, he's a desk officer, officer for the protection of journalists, media and free speech defenders in crises and conflicts at the German Foreign Office. So Mr. Hamid is asking, um, it was mentioned in the, discussion, in, the, in the discussion that some of the panelists would envision a dialogue between media representatives and re representatives of the de facto government facilitated by international actors. Could you please outline in more detail how such a process could ideally look like from your perspectives? What kind of formats would be needed? I think this, okay. uh, this question was aimed at you, uh, yeah. Mr. Bahar. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'll try to uh, somehow elaborate this uh, platform or format. Uh, I suggested it because that is the only option uh, available for the time being. 
uh, as we have uh, heard here, and we have uh, uh, first hand information from Afghanistan that lots of media owners have already fled the country. And so there is a vacuum, uh, but uh, still, as, as, as uh, we have seen that still some media outlets are there in Afghanistan just to maintain for the survival of the current media outlets in Afghanistan, uh, I'm not so much um, uh, optimistic for the future because uh, things are so shrinking, particularly the freedom of media, the situations for journalists, and uh, access to information. Uh, things are so, I would say, very dire in Afghanistan. But that is the only possible option uh, the format could be that, yeah, we have uh, two, two points here should be uh, mentioned. First, uh, the media organizations, Afghan media organizations, the owner of those organizations, I think needs to be coordinated. They should uh, come up and uh, they could establish one single entity that could talk on behalf of all those uh, media outlets with the current regime. That's one thing. The second thing is that these talks should be in the presence of international organizations, not only media organizations, but also some international humanitarian organizations like UN, for example, some foreign offices, let's say like Foreign Ministry of Germany or Foreign Ministry of any other uh, uh, Western countries, because that could put more pressure on the, on the Taliban. We are, during those uh, meetings and that talks, uh, they could uh, establish kind of norms, although uh, uh, norms and, and criteria, criteria are not strictly followed because lots of promises we have heard, but these promise, promises were not met. And uh, uh, still, we have been hearing lots of uh, uh, dire story about, about the current situations, particularly situations of the uh, uh, Afghan journalists. And further, the, the problem, the other problem is these wrongdoings are not accepted. She Daniels, we have been hearing from, from the regime saying, no, we haven't done that, we haven't done this. But later on, at the end of the day, we have been hearing, let's say, let's give an example of just a few weeks, a few days ago that uh, some international uh, uh, worker of some international organizations were arrested and until they were released, their, their, their responsibilities were not taken. No one knew that where they were, who arrested them. Until they were released, we just uh, learned that, yeah, they were released, uh, they were arrested by the, the regime. And uh, so, I mean, this kind of sheer Daniels is, is, is rejecting, sheer rejecting of all the, the ground reality. First, that should be addressed. Like, what is happening there? I mean, when these uh, format, when these uh, single entity or the international uh, representative of, of, of the government, when they are talking with the Taliban, they should prioritize the, the, the freedom of media, freedom of speech. So for my understanding that uh, freedom of media or, or freedom of speech uh, has largely been ignored or deprioritized, first thing, that should be urgently prioritized. That should be discussed with the, with the Taliban in a kind of like a, a, a two-way communications, like for the, the media could be represented by that organization that's going to be established in, in, in the presence of international uh, community, uh, country uh, representative of, 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 of foreign uh, ministries and uh, that should be kind of like a, um, a kind of a, a accountability measurement like okay what have been happened or oh, I mean, like what is going to be happen you promise this let's see at the ground reality does that action take place will that take place that action if yes then uh, that could be further followed I mean they, they could some they, they, the international community uh, could uh, set some criteria and those criteria needs mm. to be strictly followed both mm. uh, by, by the international community and also that what, entity. What could this criteria be, for instance, uh, when we when you speak to the Taliban, they will always say, oh, we have a very and vibrant media according to Afghan tradition or Islam. But what does it actually mean? Because 
uh, I mentioned the needs assessment of and 40 and their whole program has changed. So not one or two or three or four, their whole program. Uh, oftentimes, they're, they don't play music anymore. They don't play cereals, Indian cereals or Turkey cereals. Not very far from Afghan tradition, right? So they don't play those cereals in movies anymore. Afghan tradition, what and 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 can go back to criteria could actually be so we could hold the Taliban some, accountable. Yeah, there are some controversial issues and uh, very subjective issues too. For example, saying that yeah that belongs to the tradition of Afghanistan, but that doesn't belong to the tradition of Afghanistan. That belongs to the very framework of Islam, framework of Sharia. Music is one of those type of issues, very controversial issues. Lots of countries, I mean, in, in Islamic countries, uh, music has nothing to do with uh, with uh, with a uh, with the personal with the peoples you know uh, lots of uh, media outlet they could easily uh, broadcast there is there are music other things uh, too in the same of of, of uh, the the uh, the criteria the means like uh, the definitions of uh, of of uh, sharia the definition of islam the definitions of uh, cultural uh, uh, sensitive issues i think these issues are so subjective and uh, for the time being the, the, when the, the the international entity the international organizations are talking with the taliban so these are more personal and kind of thing should be somehow allowed because it's, it's it doesn't uh, i would say it doesn't uh, uh, it it doesn't harm or it doesn't uh, criticize anything to, to, with, the, with the current government. So it's more like a personal issues. Those things, are, uh, those kind of issues, I think uh, it's not that much important for, uh, it, it also is not very much related to, to, to journalism too, but more important issues, for example, there are so vague definitions, for example, uh, um, uh, let's say, and national interest is one of the issues like damaging the reputations of the current regime is another issue. damaging the high ranking officials of the 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 the, the, the current regime is another these issues are, are uh, i mean they are imposing some restrictions under those uh, different names and different vague definitions i think those kind of definitions uh, needs to be defined properly like what do you mean by this uh, if you are uh, 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 imposing these kind of uh, 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 restrictions while you are promoting, while you are saying that we, we believe in a freedom, uh, free media, we believe in a freedom of speech, these two things are contradicted to each other. So I think uh, when the, the, the international community or that entity is, is going to be established and when they are uh, discussing the, this kind of criteria with the Taliban, they should address the very fundamental issues of, of, of these uh, kind of uh, definitions. Another thing is like uh, uh, access to, 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 to information. I have been hearing lots of, uh, uh, lots of voices from journalists that uh, they don't have uh, access to information, although the Taliban recently have appointed some spokespersons for different, uh, for different uh, ministries, but still journalists uh, they are either deliberately denied or uh, they don't have access to those kind of peoples and they have to wait for months to talk to it. So, I mean, when the, the, the international organizations or when the Afghan uh, uh, entity is going to talk with the Taliban, they should set particular uh, criteria, particular uh, conditions. For example, uh, how many journalists have been arrested and how many warnings you have issued. There are some uh, directive, unannounced or informal uh, directive imposed by those uh, particularly local community radios, but that have not been reported. These kind of ground reality or measurable criteria could be set. And based on those criteria, uh, uh, all of the promises uh, should be measured and then uh, 
they try the, 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 the international organization may uh, release or may aid some of their, for example, may establish relationship with the Taliban based on those already set criteria. Thank you. Uh, we have more questions and I have to pass the mic. Yes, thank you to, to all of you for bearing with us with these technical difficulties. I hope nevertheless that the discussion is very interesting for all of you. Um, there are two questions by um, our guest uh, Mina Jawad. Um, I will read them, the both of them, I think. First one is, how do you assess the role of foreign journalists in the post-Republic era? And then the reports of foreign journalists suggest that press freedom is only restricted to a certain extent while female Afghan journalists in particular are unable to pursue their work. Do these double standards serve the international recognition of the Taliban and are foreign journalists uh, being instrumentalized for propaganda? Uh, did you understand the question? In general, the question is about the journalists is coming from abroad and preparing reports. Uh, are they instrumentalized by the Taliban? That was the question. Uh, you mean those reporters who are foreigners? Okay, it is a good question. Maybe uh, many would be asking the fundamental question, why domestic journalists are escaping uh, in leaving Afghanistan while foreign journalists are coming to Afghanistan to report? I have no doubt that this is directly uh, related to the international pressure exerted by the world on the Taliban. But they could not deal with the reporters coming to Afghanistan from credible news agencies such as BBC, CNN or European networks the same way as they deal with the domestic reporters like me in Afghanistan and Afghan journalists. These foreign reporters have a state. They are subject, subject uh, to a government that supports them. The media that belongs uh, to this government has been given prior guarantees from the Taliban. They have certainly uh, talked with the Taliban in advance that uh, their uh, reporter is coming uh, to the country and then they reach an agreement that individual journalist will be preparing a report in Afghanistan and that his travel needs uh, to be uh, guaranteed in the Taliban in order to be uh, recognized or at least to show that everything is fine are trying to give the opportunity to the foreign reporters. I was in a press conference where Zabiullah Mujahid, the speaker of the Taliban group, or in other words, the speaker of the Taliban government, was talking. Uh, notified on several occasions his translator sitting next to him to give time to the uh, uh, international journalists present in the conference. In no chance for the domestic reporters. He believed he could get, as get assistance this way, or this formula could help the Taliban group that took over the government somehow to be recognized by the world. Uh, then why are the foreign journalists not using this opportunity to criticize the Taliban? Why don't they take this matter uh, more seriously? I was asking uh, why do uh, foreign journalists not use this opportunity and, and pressure the Taliban and ask them tough questions? Incidentally, uh, three days ago, I read a report from a famous uh, international media organization whose reporter uh, traveled to Afghanistan and prepared a report. After that, I am afraid the Taliban will restrict even the foreign journalists uh, to Afghanistan. 
because contrary to what you asked, and maybe many will believe that foreign journalists who went to Afghanistan prepared reports and did criticism as well, and no doubt. However, to ensure a continuity of movement and not to stop their relations or not to prevent the preparation of their reports for their organization by severely critical uh, uh, approach uh, to Taliban. They decide how to deal with the Taliban as a factor which affects uh, their uh, future work. So one more question and then... Uh, yes, we have another question by Basma Mahamdi, um, Program Director at Deutsche Welle Academy. <clears throat> what about the media studies at Kabul University? Are the courses there still running? Did the Taliban interfere uh, in the media academics field? Uh, and if, uh, and if yes, uh, how would this affect the quality of journalism in Afghanistan in the future? Uh, Maybe Mr. Bahar can answer this question as a scholar. Maybe we can uh, also keep it brief so I can still come okay. to our other uh, female Nargis panelists. Nargis can, can uh, and reply to this question. You may have heard that recently the Taliban allowed uh, the university to reopen and in uh, in, in provinces, in uh, hot provinces, seasonal provinces, some of the universities have been opened, and uh, so far uh, they have not intervened, but uh, there are reports that they may change the syllabi of, of the, the, the universities, uh, uh, they may uh, introduce some of, uh, some of the values, some of the topics that they like, and they may extract some of the topic that uh, they, they they don't they, they don't don't like, but so far they have not. Uh, they haven't seen so far any uh, intervention, and because it's uh, like yeah, last week the university started, it, and uh, so far uh, not all the university students have fully returned, and not not all the lessons have fully started. But uh, the the the, few, the 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 future what I'm expecting is. They may be intervening because they have been also working on the school curricula uh, uh, of the uh, uh, undergrad, uh, the school university students, and the same may happen to the university's uh, syllabi and uh, curricula, particularly for the uh, media schools as well. Thank you, Abahar. So, Mrs. Sheikh, um, let me come back to you. And uh, like I said, I also want to talk about the situation of female journalists and. What are they doing now? I mean, is there other solutions that they're trying to pursue? Um, is there, I mean, we know, for instance, with schools that many female girls are going to underground school. Is there a similar strategy for um, female journalists? Are they trying to still operate underground? Or um, is there any, nothing they can do right now? Um, uh they are doing their best, I think. They're trying, they raise their voice, and they uh, always ask for their rights. For, they ask uh, um, international communities to help them because uh, of the situation. They uh, become very, uh, like, uh, um, hope that they can do more you know it's impossible in this time but they are doing their best because uh, especially uh, not only female journalists also uh, social activists in uh, Afghanistan female social activists they're doing demonstration and they um, like they're trying hard but in this situation we could not like uh, hope they can do more than they now doing you know but the, um, my point is if uh, 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 journalists especially female journalists and every Afghan they are uh, like now and uh, they uh, like uh, immigrate to other countries they are in Europe in America and other uh, uh, like foreign countries they are in safe place and they they more can help uh, from outside of Afghanistan they can support uh, uh, Afghan female especially uh, Afghan female journalists and social activists and even parliaments uh, member they can uh, like uh, 
race from outside of Afghanistan. They can race wise from here. And because this, they, they, they have opportunities there in a safe place and also international community uh, can help them. And uh, this is easy, but in Afghanistan now, uh, it's not really easy to do. It's very difficult. I know I am, even I cannot talk more about the uh, about my colleague in situation maybe my every statement affect my, uh, to uh, the life of my uh, employees because they are still in afghanistan and uh, but in uh, from outside if uh, every afghan come here they be start uh, be active and they establish their own organizations in uh, uh, no matter it's very uh, small organizations but they should start because this is the time to like uh, um, help our country and they be together and be a un unit to uh, make unity with each other all afghan and no matter what region what uh, uh, what listen uh, what language they speak but they should be together because this is the time if we uh, start work from outside of Afghanistan for our country, it's name more effect. Uh, and, and also um, my uh, hope is from um, international organization to help Afghans. Uh, uh, they should, if after they start being active in the society, and I, 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 I believe they will, uh, help them, but it's very important to help Afghan people uh, to um, like um, start from the uh, these countries uh, and uh, start small media, radio organization, and this is very really effectful. And uh, they can also uh, make connection with uh, Afghan uh, women journalists in Afghanistan, and they can uh, help each other. They can like uh, support each other. This is the time. And also if a uh, um, um, uh, reporter without bother, they can also um, make a network uh, um, between all uh, Afghan journalists in outside of Afghanistan, uh, whenever countries they are now, they should uh, make a, a network be together and work for our country. This is possible to do from uh, yeah. outside. Afghanistan, yes. Thank you. I, I, I think that Reporters Without Borders is already trying to do that and they've been establishing this. Um, what are you doing now that you're outside of the country? You just mentioned that also uh, uh, Afghan journalists in exile are still trying to be active and still trying to do their work. Are you also still working and trying to get information out of the country for the international community or the other way around? Uh, yes, uh, um, uh, I am uh, still working here. I am working hard because we in nowadays we uh, establish our TV channel in uh, uh, US, and uh, we also trying to like uh, um, uh, release more independent news information about our country in our region, and also we want to uh, like uh, um, uh, help our. Uh, all Afghans, they living in the USA, and we trying from here. And also, before I mentioned that nowadays, I'm really trying hard to help my uh, female journalist employee in Afghanistan uh, to they make uh, like um, any opportunities to uh, come to other countries like uh, Germany and, and any country that I can help them because the situation I'm now, uh, like I told you that I closed my radio and I never found any way to like, uh, um, like continue my work. It's very difficult, especially in my area because of this, I am trying to work uh, from outside. Like if I have my own radio TV channel in the US, I can also hire my employees and also we can work together. We can like what we, done before in Afghanistan, we now can do in uh, here. And also we can mm -hmm. like be more independent. We can uh, like uh, broadcast independent news and uh, it's easy. And also it's uh, help our country, you know, and because of this, I'm trying from here and I'll will be trying hard. Thank you, Mr. Sheikh. Um, Rustami, Mr. Rustami, do you think that this could be an, an opportunity or a way out or a solution for Afghan journalists in exile 
to obtain information and to broadcast information for Afghans inside the country or outside the country. Do you think it can be a solution? But as I said, for journalists who are in exile to obtain or broadcast information for the Afghans inside or outside the country, there is no doubt that over the past six months, a major portion of capacities, editors in chiefs, heads of the media, and media elites and journalists fled Afghanistan with the help of various international media organizations, including RSF. I think it's a good opportunity to express our gratitude to all of them, other countries and organizations, for their efforts in whiskying the Afghans. Anyway, a part of the capacities has been transferred to foreign countries, but I concretely propose uh, to the countries to do whatever they can to ensure the continuity of freedom of expression and free activity of the media in our country. These capacities, capacities outside the country should be tapped in a proper manner. Some countries have publications in Pashto and Dari. Afghan media workers abroad can contribute to enhance their capacities uh, by being employed. Secondly, I appeal to media institutions, particularly the RSF, to form a strong Afghan media in the national Dari and Pashto languages by tapping these capacities. As a result, information will be disseminated properly to people and the existing Afghan capacities uh, will be employed. Uh, otherwise, uh, the uh, current Afghan reports abroad uh, must start from zero here. Uh, I think uh, there are capacities that can be tapped, uh, taking their plans and their ideas into consideration. If they are collected and tapped well, it will be better to play their role in, in the media uh, and they will continue their work. Uh, so I want to maybe um, finish this up a little bit and wrap this up. So we just heard Mr. Sheikh and uh, Mr. Rusami. Um, let's also talk about, because now we're talking about um, the solutions and how we can still obtain information from Afghanistan. And I know, uh, Mr. Bahar, that you are focusing on the role of social media in Afghanistan. Can social media be uh, a way to, to, to still obtain information and spread information independently? Uh, for the time being, yes, I think social media is the only platform uh, because it's owned by everyone, so uh, it doesn't have the filter channel. But still in Afghanistan, those peoples who are still there, they cannot openly express their views. Uh, but uh, those who are outside of, the, of the Afghanistan, if they don't have... Uh, we know that uh, uh, living in exiles, uh, may, no, you may not always have the opportunity to, to, to talk. But social media will make you able to, to, to talk and express your views. But again, it's the only option, I think, uh, for the time being. But that is not, I would say, the best option uh, because it's, it's, uh, there are so many uh, problems with social media. First thing is it's, uh, uh, there are lots of uh, organized groups in Afghanistan uh, supported by the regime, so they could easily dismiss whatever you are saying. They'll be labeling you with different names, and in also because of the disinformation, everyone would be uh, propagating or, or, or pro promoting uh, their views or, or disinformation. So that is not a very, very healthy journalism, although Social media is, I would say, uh, one of the best options for the time being, but still uh, it has some uh, shortcomings. The best uh, solution, I would say, is first that uh, the international community, again, I, would, I will be more emphasizing on, inter in, on the international community, that they could support what those media who are still in Afghanistan, first thing, particularly the community radios in a very rural area, because I think they have uh, seen a very extreme uh, uh, hardship so far. Uh, although you see like uh, in, in the capital, things are relatively good, I would say, but uh, on the 
provincial levels, uh, things are totally different. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the first thing, the, 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 the community radios and community journalism should be supported. That could be supported through different ways uh, because community radios may be uh, running out of the fund of the resources. Uh, they may be collapsing not only because of the, uh, the, the, the strict uh, uh, strict rules or strict uh, restrictions of the Taliban, they would be also because, uh, be stopping their operation because they may be running out of the financial resources mm -hmm. you know, because they had enough uh, resources, but now they are uh, running out. And that the first thing, like supporting the, internet, the, the, the community radios. Second is talked with the Taliban on behalf of the uh, Afghan uh, radios on behalf of the media communities of Afghanistan and also to support those uh, media community to talk with the Taliban. They should be talking on the same page um, um, in, in presence of each other. That was the second thing. And the third thing, uh, although it's, it's a good option that the reporters, Afghan reporters in exile, they, could, they should be supported and they should be coordinated and they could um, work from outside. But still, uh, a real, a critical journalism needs a ground reality. So who will be, who will be reporting the ground reality? If, if, if everyone is fleeing the country, if everyone is going from uh, Afghanistan, oh, so we are, they will receive the information from. I think the, uh, that's, not, that's the kind of a like short-term solution. But the best solution is to talk with the Taliban, to soften their approach. I mean, to, to, to lose their restriction and to give or uh, to, 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 to show in practice what they have been promising in, 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 in Afghanistan. So these are, I would say, the fundamental and long-term solution. But again, that needs to be supported uh, by uh, the more about by the international communities and international uh, media organization and also uh, some countries who, who are more influential in Afghanistan. Thank you. Um, Aroy Paimon, what do you think? Um, do you agree with uh, Aroy Bahar? Do you, um, Mr. Paimon, what do you think? Uh, do you agree with Mr. Bahar that uh, one can talk with the Taliban? Uh, can uh, the social media be a solution? With regard to speaking with the Taliban, I do not agree, at least not in the short term. Everyone knows that the Taliban pursue a policy of animosity with the media. The nature of the Taliban does not require the media. Taliban policies cannot be merged with the media values, such as freedom of expression and freedom of the press, unless inter international pressures are exerted on them in such a way that they change uh, their mindset for their survival and preservation of their reign they grasp now in, in Afghanistan. So talks to them may be effective for a change. I would like to say that the only instrument that is available today it, to put pressure on the Taliban or the uh, social media. But uh, these are mostly uh, those Afghans who left the country. The ones who witnessed the events in the country by their own eyes, unfortunately, do not have the chance as a citizen to express uh, their views and criticize uh, the Taliban in the social media. But still, uh, social media do play a role. If they did not exist, there would have been a great gap in describing the prevailing situation uh, in Afghanistan. 
If you allow me, uh, um, very shortly, I would like to add one more point. Yes, please. Of course, it will be your last point in the last message of this forum. Uh, with regard to the media, according to reports published by some media, 50% of the media are currently inactive. I want to have an unpleasant forecast. On account of economic constraints, the media are suffering now in Afghanistan. We will probably may be witnessing the collapse of another big portion of the Afghan media in the near future or in the months to come because many medias were potentially dependent on international assistance. <clears throat> Today, we do not see commercial and productive uh, activities, etc. <clears throat> Even the, the Taliban misuses this opportunity, asking production and commercial companies who have deep relations with them or are under their uh, 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 ec economy or their economies are under the threat are warned not to cooperate with the media and do not give them propaganda tools. Thus, the media will face a collapse financially. The Taliban will soon use this opportunity uh, to broaden uh, their sphere of uh, maneuvers. Thank you. Um, thank you for being with us today. This uh, was uh, our panel the, the, um, on the situation on the ground in Afghanistan six months after the fall of the Taliban. Thank you for your patience. I think we took a little bit longer, but it was a very insightful discussion and uh, we heard a lot about what is going on, on uh, in Afghanistan on the ground. Um, I uh, just realized that I'd never uh, introduced myself. My name is Waslat Hasrat Nazimi. I work at Deutsche Welle. I'm the head of the Afghan department. I'm very happy that uh, I had excellent guests here today. And I also hope that you found this uh, discussion fruitful. Uh, thank you for the Deutsche, uh, Deutsche Welle Academy and uh, Reporters Without Borders. And um, of course, BMZ for supporting and organizing this event. And thank you for being with us. If you have more questions, please do not hesitate to, to ask them. And uh, we will still try to answer uh, your questions. And uh, uh, like I said in the beginning, this panel has been recorded, so there will also be a chance to rewatch it. Thank you. <laughs>